Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Uh, I think Ranjini ma'am has joined. Ranjini ma'am? Yes, yes, sir. She's Ranjini ma'am. Oh, sir, good evening. Good evening, good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So good, ma'am. Ah, I'm... okay, okay, okay. Now I can see. So, well, uh, Arun Mohan, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yes. Let's start. Yes. Uh, I welcome all our uh, dignified educators to the 193rd web training series of our BTAG in association with CBSE Bharat Sahodaya. Now, as you all know, it is time to uh, welcome our uh, moderator. So I am turning on our AI. Dear educators, I the entity, welcome you to BTAG. Our 193rd session tells you how to craft creative and effective activities for early years for creative development. Now it's time to invite our moderator, so I turn on my AI, Emily to welcome her. Good evening to all the exuberant educators, I welcome you all to the 193rd web training series of BTAG in association with CBSE Bharat Sahadaya. Now I take it as pleasure to introduce today's moderator, Ms. Sarita Warrior. She has completed her post-graduation in economics from the prestigious Ferguson College, Pune. She has done her B.Ed. in English and Economics. Presently working as high school teacher at Nalanda Public School, Mumbai for the past 15 years where she teaches English, Economics and Financial Markets Management. She is an avid reader, an amateur poet and scriptwriter who trains students for inter-school competitions. She strongly believes that education is not merely a profession but a true vocation that entails continuous hard work towards achieving excellence in one's students. She has rendered her services to CBSE Bharat Sahadaya as moderator in a number of sessions. She is associated with BTAG as the chief editor of the Transformers e-magazine. So I cordially invite you to take over this grand session. Over to you ma'am. Warm welcome to Sarita, ma'am. Stage is yours, ma'am. Thank you so much, Arun, sir. I hope you're feeling better today. Yes, ma'am, I am. So nice to see you. At least you look better. Thank you so much. So nice to see you. So good evening to one and all. Present here with us for the 193rd web training session being conducted by BTAG in collaboration with CBSE Bharat Sohodya today. It gives all of us here at BTAG immense pleasure to see so many passionate educators who have joined us today on this platform to learn more about crafting and planning effective activities for our littlest learners in the early childhood group. Well begun is half done. When we work, plan, organize and execute perfect or near perfect activities for these young ones, we are setting them up with a strong foundation upon which they can build their future learning experiences, thus achieving the true goal of education. Activities for early childhood years need to be planned with care, thought, precision, creativity and variety so that the children not only learn effectively, but also enjoy the whole process. With these points in mind, we have here with us a very talented and resourceful resource person, Ms. Ranjani Harigopal Das, who will be guiding all of us on how to plan effective and creative activities for children in the early years group. Before we move ahead to the next part of our program, participants are requested to note the following instructions for the smooth conduct of the program. <clears throat> Keeping your camera on is optional. However, we do request you to be an interactive audience by sharing your thoughts and ideas through the chat box. We would love to hear from you. If you have any query during the session, you may post them on the chat box. These queries will definitely be taken up by Ms. Ranjani at the end of the session. We also have a dedicated question answer round at the end where the participants can raise their hand and converse with the resource person for any further clarification. Kindly note that the feedback and certificate link 
will be shared towards the end of the session. Participants may avail the certificate by filling in all the particulars. So sit back and make the most of the session that BTAG has planned and organized just for all our dear educators. It's now an honor and privilege for me to welcome our founder director, Dr. Abdul Salam. Dr. Salam is an educator with more than 23 years of experience in the educational sector. He is a CBSE resource person and master trainer. Sir is presently working in the capacity of principal of Vibgyor High, Yalahanka, Bangalore. He is also associated with NABET, that is National Accreditation Board for Education and Training, Government of India, as an assessor. He is the CEO of BTAG, that is Bharat Transformers Academic Group, a consortium of educators, thousands of them to be very frank, across the globe, all working towards a common goal of educational excellence. On behalf of all our participants present today here, I welcome you, sir, and request you to please deliver the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Sarida. Ms. Ranchini, the resource person of today, Arun Mohan and all educators, hearty welcome to 192nd, I 193rd. We are nearing uh, 200, right? So thank you so much, all the participants, for continuously learning, joining us, giving your uh, inputs, your cooperations, your suggestions that make us improve ourselves in terms of what we deliver. Uh, Ms. Ranchini, there is no need of introduction. A very proactive member of the BTAC family has been rendering very valuable training sessions on this platform. As committed last month, she has come with a lot of things to enlighten everybody on in terms of activity-based learning, which is envisaged by national education policy through foundational literacy and numeracy. So let's all lend our ears to Ranjini ma'am. We are pretty sure that you'll be getting a lot of ideas, innovative ideas and uh, methodologies to follow to benefit the students creative development. So thank you so much everybody for joining once again. On all your behalf, I take this opportunity to thank Ranjini ma'am uh, for offering this particular session. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you everybody. Sit back and enjoy. Over to Sarita ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much sir. I would now like to welcome one of the most committed, dedicated and talented resource persons BTAG has had the privilege of being associated with an educationist par excellence who's extremely passionate in early years education and is an expert in her field, Ms. Ranjani Harigopal Das. Ms. Ranjani has over two decades of engagement in early years with a master's degree in childcare. She is an NCFE approved cash assessor and a trainer serving the Middle East region. She also serves as a curriculum specialist for the BVM Group of Schools India and as mentioned before, very strongly associated with BTAG and Bharat Sahodia. I'm extremely fortunate to have Ranjini as a very good friend, and we spend many happy hours discussing and connected, not only on education, but a multitude of topics and ideas. On behalf of all of us at BTAG and our participants for today, I welcome Ms. Ranjini to this session. Over to you, Ranjini, and all the best. Thank you, Sarita. Thank you, Arun Mohan. A big thanks to Dr. Abdul Salam, sir. It's a blessing to be called that he is my mentor. So that's how I relate uh, with Bharat Sahodia and with uh, Abdul Salam, sir. He's my mentor. Thank you so much, sir. I hope my voice is audible to all of you. All right. So, much. no problem. No problem. Thank you, Sarita. Thank you. And uh, thanks, Arun Mohan, again. Uh, Sarita was mentioning, please take care of yourself. Yeah. So, 
today's uh, topic is a pretty interesting topic. And uh, I wish all of us take notes because in today's session, uh, for you all to look from an external point of view, the content might be less. It will look as if it is less, but it is an interactive session. So since we are heading towards 300, we would like all of you to write on the chat box and you know keep that as an interactive window for both of us, right? Because there will be definitely questions to be asked to you and you should be able to provide whatever your understanding on the chat. So at the end of the session, what it will give in return to you is you should be able to craft a beautiful activity plan. And though we are talking about earlier today, this activity plan skeleton that we are going to talk about for the next one hour and 35 minutes, you can apply across from pre-KG to 12th grade. Doesn't matter. So that's why this particular activity plan template, as such, it's a very interesting one. So how to weave such a beautiful activity template is what we are going to see. What are all the parameters that we are going to take while weaving a beautiful activity plan, while we craft a beautiful activity plan? What are all the ingredients you will put in? For example, if you go on cooking, uh, what you will do is probably if you make a sweet, you would put milk or put sugar and you put, you know, all the other ingredients or rice, uh, flakes or something and then you put uh, raisins you add some ghee you might add some milk but you might add a lot of things like that when you make an activity plan there are some important ingredients to be added so the last part of the activity plan it's like your um what do you call the uh, bottom flakes or you can call a saffron because that is the important part of the activity plan which is going to connect you to the next uh, reflective part of your planning, right? So I'm gonna screen share right away. And let's see the desk, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, am, I, am I given the... Uh... Yes, I think you I are share? the co-host, Ranjini. Yes, you are the co-host. You should be able to right. uh, share the screen. I'm the green button. I don't see green here. At, uh, all right. Yes, got it. All right. Yes. Perfect. All right. Let's get here. And let's get here. All right. So, uh, crafting an effective activity plan. I would like to connect with people on LinkedIn. That's a professional network and I love to be there. I've grown so much uh, with LinkedIn support. A lot of professionals have come and they have shared their ideas. I would like to connect with all of you. That's my LinkedIn uh, uh, link to connect as well as my number on WhatsApp, right? Okay, so fine. Straight away you have a question, participants. You have lots of visuals over here. We call it as Pictionary Support. Crafting an effective plan as per earlier, and you have some pictures. So what does it say? Uh, it speaks about action plan because the label is there. And you have something like two people trying to do something. Another one is personalized growth plan. And then uh, you have over here, there are more than two people working on something. And uh, yes, resources, differentiation. Um, somebody is on the book doing some kind of a reading and then um, a reflect part. So many things are there. How do you connect? And what is most important for you amidst all of this that I have put in here? Or can you sequence them? Yes, that's the question for you right away. Only then we can go to the topic. I'm going to um, look at the chat box. You can start writing. Yes. Yeah. So brainstorming. Okay, somebody is brainstorming. Which picture are you saying? Brainstorming. Could I say from left 
um, action plan. The next one, inclusive. All right, we are talking about inclusive. The picture one, brainstorming. Okay, he's making an action plan. All right, thank you. Action words. Okay, action words. Okay, the differentiated classroom, right? Then you, IEP. All right, okay, individual educational plan. Okay, so we are going to collaboration, planner. Okay, so what comes first is what I'm asking. Which one comes first? All the age groups, lovely. On whatever I have put in here, which one comes first? Collaboration comes first. Before that, what happens? Action plan comes first. Okay. What comes first? Before the action plan, what comes first? If I have to plan on something, what is that I have to do before I plan? Yes. Let me look in here. Thought processing, sequencing, data collection. Okay, let's keep data collection. Involvement, yes, definitely. Research, prior knowledge, personal growth plan, lovely. Let's go back, data collection, yes. Body groups, resources, okay. Proper planning with agenda, lovely. See, let's keep data collection. Creative thinking, check resources. Before data collection, what should come? Or in our ways in early years, what do you think data collection is? Again, planning, should I tell you the answer? Observation, sorting, everything is fine. What exactly I want my kids to know. If you want your kids to know something, it should be based on your observation. Only then you will know what your kid needs, what your child needs. Knowing the way child can learn, how can you do that? Knowing the way child can learn is by observing. So finally, we come to observations. Okay, right. So today, the chat box will be used judicially a lot because a lot of questions are coming up. Okay, so now let's keep observation. So let's go to one, two, three, the fourth pick. The fourth pick, there are three people. So let's take our scenario like... Um, we are subject teachers, not the homeroom teachers. Let's keep it like that, okay? Or even if we are homeroom teachers, doesn't matter. If you are homeroom teachers, let's take this pick, where two, three picks and one wrong. It's a reflective part. How did the plan go for me? And what should I do next time to make it happen even more nice? So that's homeroom teacher. When you go to subject teachers, like grade one and grade two, let's keep it like that, yeah? Zero to eight years, grade one and grade two. So the math teacher is coming in, the English teacher is coming in, the EVS teacher is coming, three subjects, basic subjects, right? And they are looking into, on one child's learning journal, how things went for the last one week or 10 days or 15 days. What is the growth chart? Then they observe the child. So if they have to make a mark, then it is based on their observation and the child's evidence. So what comes first? Observation comes first. Based on your observation, on the level of the cognitive skill, you try to action plan. When you action plan on something, anything to happen, then you first think on the resources. While you, while you plan on your resources, simultaneously you plan on your research also. That's the one with the open book. When you do the research, you bring in a lot of theoretical perspective into your planning. So it goes like simultaneously. Observation, try to fit into a plan. While planning, what you will put in, you will think on the resources. What do I have? What do I need? So in between comes your lesson objective. What is the objective? What's my milestone first? What am I going to achieve? Why am I planning? Then keep that LO, learning objective in mind or the learning outcome in mind. Now look for resources. When you look for resources, you must always have a strong base when you select the resources. It should be age and stage appropriate. Number two, definitely it should embrace a theorist. 
So we're going to talk about different theories today. Then what happens is you bring in the IEP, individual educational plans, because at least one or two children you will have as sent children. You need that special educational needs, support for them. There you will work with the other professionals. Miss so-and-so, I'm working on an actional plan now. In this, I have two children. What kind of resources do you think you will accommodate for this child X and Y? You work with the center. Then what do you do? You bring in all those inputs into your activity plan under the heading, the gifted children. The additional support children. They are gifted in a way, right? And you have the smart category who will do in a GIF. Then you need an extended learning for them to keep them engaged, not just engaged, but engaged towards the learning outcome. Right. So after comes the IEP, then the differentiated classroom. What's a differentiated classroom? All the different kinds of learners are there. The gifted is there. The, the, the super smart ones are there. The ones who need my individual support is there. The slow runners are also there. So it's a differentiated classroom. So my activity should be planned in such a way I cater to all of them. Then comes your reflective part. That reflective part is how did it go for me? What did I do? How much percentile did I achieve? What is there for me to achieve? That is equal to accommodations. I want you to write down all this. Today, a lot of notes have to be taken because if you keep this and do your activity plan, trust me, your management will be very happy with you because it's a beautiful skeleton, right? And it will be helpful for all the classes throughout pre to 12th grade. It's very beautiful. It's very interesting, right? So let's go to the next one now, okay? Fine, so I have taken bits and pieces of an A4 sheet plan, bits and pieces for us to discuss today. So the first one goes is, what is this activity plan number, subject, topic, date, and time of plan? Um, how does it matter when I plan? No, it's important. When do you plan? When you want to execute? Child, Identifier, class is okay, pre-KG, KG1, uh, E-section, all that is fine. What is child identifier? The same activity plan will be used for that one child X who is having an IEP, which is a sent child. You have identified a child. We're going to work on the holistic development, which is the prime area of development, or speech issues. So child identifier. It is for the whole class. Or the same skeleton can be used for one single chat. So that's that. That's what it says. Resources. What resources you want to put in? Please list it there. Okay. Because when you put the resource, when you see the description of the activity, then when you see the theoretical perspective and then the reflection, you can circle what mistake you have done. You will either go change the resources and embrace another theorist because first time your, your approach wasn't okay, you go back on the resources. Let's take a simple example. I'm an assessor in UAE. I go to a lot of nurseries. Healthy eating activity, same activity plan template. Okay, it's an it's a trust me, it's an international skeleton, early year skeleton. This is how people do it in across the world. So you should take a snapshot. I want you to craft a beautiful activity. Lovely. So Healthy eating is the LO. Learning outcome is healthy eating. So the learner has brought in fruits, apple, orange, something to peel, something to smell, sensory growth, as well as tactile learning to peel, to peel a banana. And he has given a toy knife, which is risk assessment. Risk assessment is also done. He's given a toy knife now. Now the child has to cut. The apple, she has cut into half and she has given. So it's easy for them to at least chop a bit from the soft part of the apple, right? Not outside. She missed to give a banana 
to a child who did not have a proper fine motor. The child was struggling hard for the first six minutes. That was the observation by the assessor. She needs to give a toy knife and a banana where the child will be able to easily chop. So in her resources, the child identifier comes in a circle there, resources goes there, banana goes there. In When it comes to differentiation, she should say, send child, child X, I should have done this. Straight away, put all three into the accommodation. Next time, she will not forget. This is how you reflect on your activity. I'm talking about simple things. You can bring in any content you want. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay. So when you see here, what are the development learning? Development area or learning outcome? This activity is going to promote. What is this activity is going to give? Will this activity give me physical development, social development, emotional development, or a combo of all of it? It's going to be holistic development. I need to list all the areas of development. While executing, if I can do something more, I would like to come and accommodate back. So my area of development should be linked to the early years framework. That is what it says. If yours is NEP policy, CBSE, it should be aligned with that. So you must mention. You must mention what does NEP wants and how this activity plan is going to promote that particular part of the plan. Then if you do this, say for next six months, the, the so many pages, voluminous pages of this NEP document will be here. You will know exactly what it is asking for and you will be able to execute. Okay. Right. So that's about. So the teacher, she shoots an arrow, she has a focus and the child gets into the finishing line. So that's what this visual says. The way you plan and execute, the child gets to the finishing line. Let's go to the next one. Fine. This is pretty interesting. In my deck, you would have seen so many pictures like this, but each and everything carries a meaning. Let's take the first picture. It's an outdoor picture. I'm going to go on chat, right? What we'll do is we want two person to answer on the first picture. Then the second picture, another two. So let's not, you know, um, let's take fair chances, right? So the first picture First two, I know, you know, you, you never know who's going to type, so it's okay. If somebody has given their answer to people, you can stop and we can do the next. Okay, let's try like that. The first picture, it's an outdoor. We can see it. And then um, there is some, some kind of a label over there, right? There are some kind of a markings there. So I'm going on the chat. Which development it is focusing what are the other learning and development areas do you think you can focus? Let's go. I'm on the chat box. Now, social, what else? There is a prime subject over there. Can you see the markings? Gross, social, okay, PSC is taken. Life skills for EVS, okay, cognitive. There is one more very important. What is that? You need to think more. Leave the cognitive, leave the PSC. Something else is there. It is there in the specific area of development. Very good. Arifa, numeracy, right. Yes, excellent. Sensory value, everything is there. The, so let's go back again to that picture. Thank you. So numeracy, you do the math at the outdoor. So you have small wooden blocks, right? And the children can write the numbers on it. Those many times the children will keep those small leaves or twigs and they'll count. They will do sorting. They will do sequencing. They will go on the shape, size and measure. They will keep seven small cups, pour water in all the seven cups or take a small filler. Those many times, seven times they will pour it into one small cup. It can be tweaked in any way you want. Every child will attain the LO from different ways. That's your differentiated classroom. That's called a differentiated classroom. My LO, my learning outcome is math today. To tell them one to 10. But 
I have taken them to the outdoor. I the children can even do it with straws, twigs, dry leaves, or water, or anything that they like. Or they can take a sketch and keep writing on all the wooden blocks that I have kept. Or if there is a child who doesn't know formation, needs help, then I would be giving a visual of the numbers. The child will go and at least place it on the wooden block. So finally, all of them will sequence the block together. So what happens? My LO is achieved, right? So math at the outdoor. The picture which is down is pretty interesting. I want you to think and only then type, right? Because it is out of the box. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Two children are doing something. You can keep, you, I'll give you a clue. There are fair space between each and every stand. And the children are having something like a, a, a weightless column. It's like a cardboard, but it's weightless. That's why the ch child is able to carry it very sweetly. What are they doing? Which learning development it is focusing? I'm going to go on the chat box, OK? All right, collaborative learning is fine. But which area of development? Critical thinking, problem solving, spatial, Rashmi. Spatial, physical, OK? Motor development, I need a, the exact word. What is that? Let me give you a clue. It is math again. What are they doing? All right, everything is fine. I hand everything, logical everything, but what are they doing? Heavy light, measurement, very good. Shabana, wait, calculating, very good. Thank you so much. Distance, very good. Okay, making a shape. Okay, making shapes and other uh, kind of the approach comes as an auxiliary one. The main thing is they kept some two uh, small, small uh, stand. They are measuring from this stand to that stand how much cardboard I have to take. Okay, from this to that stand. And then the second child will walk and measure his steps. From this column to the other column, five steps makes this cardboard. Seven steps makes the other cardboard. For you, it is five. For me, it is seven. Probably my leg is a little bit, you know, shorter than yours. So let's do it together. It's a collaborative approach. You are right. Again, on the chat box, so many things come up. But again, it is measurement. Yeah, measuring. Hand span, leg span without taking an inch tape. Look at the age. They don't understand any numbers proper on the inch tape and stuff, but they can still measure. So we don't keep any topics for them in early years, like baby, you will do it later. You are not grown up for it. No, 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 I can measure. How will I measure? I will keep all my building blocks, one next to the other. 15 building blocks makes my table. That is how we measure. Children measure like that. We make 10 children stand against the board and another child will pick up all the building blocks and say 15 building blocks makes my class children the way they stand, sleeping, lying. So many things can be done. It is measurement. Okay. So that's nice. Thank you for participating. So enthusiastic. Thank you so much. And look at this picture. All right. It's very simple. Gross motor. Okay. Balancing. Again counting the number of blocks that they can and transition, traveling from one to the other place, one place to the other place, okay? If the children can do this on a daily basis at the outdoor, they will be able to swiftly cross if there is some puddle or water or something or at the outdoor, very nicely they'll balance it, right? So these are life skills that is imbibed into your activity plan, right? The next one is a read corner, soft cushion, grass, books, teddy bear. You know it, right? It is focusing on literacy. Look at this one, funky fingers, excellent one. We have it in all our nurseries across. Children will have nails and then they have a hammer. 
both are toy toy hammer and a toy nail and there's a hole children will nail them and screw also they can unscrew and screw also and that particular screw and nails will be turned into a literacy formation like open curve go up on the same curve come down to make a small tail letter a a sound standing line go up on the same line and come down to make letter b open curve c standing line go up on the same line closed curve letter d that's how they learn so they go with the mantra chant they do the funky fingers they get the fine motor grip they also get the tripod grip because they do they have to hold the nail they have to bang on it on the head of the nail if they bang it here even if it is a toy hammer little bit they will have a feeling at least so they have to look into it eye hand coordination brain coordination cognitive skill a hyper child if he is going to nail at least 3 or 4 just imagine what time he will be able to sit in one place usually children don't sit so we have stations like that the next one is a tire car tire right and you just roll it there four or five children collaborative work they will paint it. they'll create models out of it after that they will use it as at the outdoor to even climb on it the next one is the evs if a setup of investigation that's why maps are there globe is there children keep you know it's also equality diversity inclusion children know that they come from different diversified backgrounds they will look into the globe and say i i am here you are there but we are all are in one ball kind of a you know world it's like this they they understand only that much because they are babies there so the zero to Five year old will understand only that okay, it's a play stuff. But I am there. I am here. You are here. Your house is here. I am my house is there. Fine. Investigating. So if you look into all of this, describe how will you provide an enabling environment? That's the question. You are enabling the environment: literacy, numeracy, funky fingers, which is uh, fine motor, right? Expressive arts and design, painting the tire. gross motor skills climbing on something and making a balance investigation skills which is understanding the world which is evs measurement and capacity emergent math we call it as emerging math for the children emerging literacy that's the nep policy right and then construction we have a construction corner children children also go and explore the outdoor they say that you know i build something i'm an architect i'm a building person i'm i'm a building architect i can do this i'm an engineer right and they go and build some otherwise they go and cook something with mud they cook are we allowing them the children to explore the natural environment around us they have to mess up with mud with mud they learn a lot right okay so we spoke on the enabling environment okay okay the next one fine now comes the theorist you have jean piaget you have bolby's theory then vygotsky you have a lot jean duvay is there eric erikson is there what are they doing maslow's theory is there what are they doing they have propounded theories as to how a child will learn absorb and grow in each and every stage of development they know very well so they have written their theories so when you do your activity plan you must for sure without hesitation must put the name of the theorist and what does he say are you in line with the theorist please check is your resources lined with the theorist is your execution of the activity the theorist will say balanced child initiated and adult initiated approach are you intervening too much on the child to say that can you color here children please take red color and and please color the um, santa whatever the cap why the santa cap can be in a different color doesn't matter right so how much intervention are you making into a child's creativity i would only say that let's not kill the scientist children are little scientist 
they have lots and lots of creativity the lesson that you take today the starter that you give in the class will not be the same tomorrow otherwise your children will get bored so one what happened i would like to share this with you there was a paper crushed paper in the nursery the class was age 4 to 5 4 to 5 year old we call them as foundation stage 1 which is fs1 right then i was in the class i wanted to throw this paper into a bin the first day starter was a mystery bag on the go i thought i should give a new starter entered the class looked into the a crushed paper on the floor then i asked the monitor our our class today is clean any issues then the monitor took the magnifying glass looked everywhere so saw the paper i said okay it's fine to today i will pick it up i picked up the paper turned towards the board put my starter into the paper and crushed it nicely and said children do you know whenever you want to throw something you have to really check whether double check two times double check so i sat on my chair and i opened it there came my starter which is pet animals so there was a pet toy inside that i said oh what comes out so i made a drama out of it what comes out that was the starter for that day my intention was to throw that paper into the bin tell the children that life skill is to don't litter around but i do the starter then also tell them there are two messages for them one is don't litter around whenever you want to throw something please double check and throw you never know what you would have kept inside or you might lose out on something which is very important so the children learned both on that day right so what i'm trying to say is the theorist will say don't put your head too much it should be a balanced adult initiated child initiated approach you give magnets that's your duty you have given magnets don't tell them how to play with it they can even put it under the table or over the table to see where it sticks if it doesn't stick they'll come to you. give them that leverage give them that platform to think be more creative that's what most of the theorists say so our activity plan must have a theorist embracing the activity plan right okay if you ask me ms ranjini is it only early years that you are focusing no look here albert einstein is there mary curie is there isaac newton is there please take all of their theories which they have propounded put it into your activity plan at least two lines about the theorist name the theorist that is when your children also learn new names literacy level goes up many of them don't even know who is isaac newton what did he do what did he contribute when you put into your activity plan when you show his video that's when they know that oh he looks like this look at the beautiful hair yeah the the picture gets into an image into their mind and it stays yes i also know newton they can talk to their friends that their iq level goes okay so it's important theoretical perspective now question comes again you i have to go on the chat box okay fine here your role and role of others you have a teacher all of you are standing here stylish with a red um, book fine look at the next one there are two professionals next one is principal the another one down is an lsa okay learning support assistant in a class where you need an lsa that is a sent child the main teacher is unable to cater to that child so a sent child is there so an extra lsa will be there and then the nannies the caretakers who always keeps the floor clean the washroom clean keep telling the children please pour water it is stinking children please learn how to use the washroom don't put the tissues here and there she's another teacher over there she's teaching them cleanliness now the question to you i'm going to go on the chat box before that please think and then type okay what are your thoughts on each of their well being to be added to your activity plan you must add them to your activity plan now you're going to add them to your activity plan what do you think is their well being who everyone should consider each other but in what perspective and platform they will consider you need to tell me right let's go on the um, chat box okay 
you are an individual teacher who is a homeroom teacher handling all the three subjects a kg teacher okay whose well being should she consider when she does the activity plan in this picture will she consider the principal more or is she going to consider the uh, lsa more what is she going to do we think about it if you say uh, the uh, professional two professionals both of them whom are they considering in their activity plan and who else they will consider think about it so it's this this particular slide is all about scaffolding strategies taking help of the other professionals and what is their well being that we have to think do we really think about other well being if so what we should think about i'll go in the chat yes right hold on once again students group wise activities ps social okay person and answer circle time all right group child last pick balanced last two pick parents and teachers fourth one 1 2 3 4 okay i want you to answer like you need to write in pairs for example i'm going to write the first one for you on the chat box please uh, take a note there and then you continue okay i'm going to write there home room teacher hyphen lsa why is she considering yeah you must consider everyone but you need the nearest pair first to look into your lesson objective right so home room teacher is considering the lsa to do a peer collaborative teaching and learning okay can you type like this another one um uh, take two combo, combo let's take the professionals and whom do you want to pair with and why what will they learn that's what it's it's divided into three parts who can type yes go on what kind of a support if you say this particular person lsa should support the main teacher so that she is able to cater to all the 20 in the class and the, those two children the lsa can support collaborative teaching and learning can happen lsa and colleagues discuss topic okay inquiry based learning the two professionals will principal and teachers lsa and nani yes important the child might not even know how to button his or her shirt or unbutton so the lsa must who understands the child in and out definitely should go special educator and the lsa yes very good basic cleanliness from nannies yes and the teacher you understand now parents and teachers can share matters frequently yes you can the the principal is looking into the professional need what is that called manager meeting he will conduct and he will look into the two professional needs they might lose out on their technical skill they might not know how to use the uh, um what do you call the interactive classroom the isp interactive boards so he will give extra learning and you know i'm sorry extra support for them through training sessions cpdc will conduct so the principal comes in there parent teachers and principal lsa to learn a uh, personal life skills yes group learning everything is fine thank you so much like this you must put a well being so can can we put all the combo of well being into one activity plan don't do that it should be a balanced one focus in bits small chunks right even if we want to grow we should we should if you want to show some change in your behavior overnight nothing change you must do it in smaller bits so first let's be very human tell the children how to behave in the washroom how to do things because she is one person who does that work without any break she has to keep the place clean so she keeps doing the same thing will we like i'm not sure but she does it so be empathetic towards teach empathy put that as a well being into your lesson plan next two professionals you must respect each other professional he might know more than you please learn from him you might be even more sound in your subject than him please tell him only if you collaborate you when you go and teach science in your class the child doesn't know shape size and measure 
you must tell your math teacher to help that particular child so that when you do science it helps you that is what they both are doing they're keeping a paper how is this child in your class this is my difficulty can you help me with this concept in your subject integrated way so that when i go he is smooth that's how things are done all right so that's how you make a combination take each other well being into your activity plan the next one thank you okay now see differentiation has come in very important so you can see differentiation means there there are two columns two rods the child is in one level the child is in the other level what do you infer can you type on the chat box let me see okay let me explain all of that to you there is another classroom a child can uh, the different pictures you infer and let me know i don't want to give you the answer on the left most a uh, down part of the uh, deck then i'm 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 in the slide now next comes three children different shapes and then the teacher both male and female they have different versions of teaching okay and there is a teacher there are two children but there is a level here right and the last one i would like to read it for you students are more engaged because the teaching style fits their learning style please mark this and keep teaching style should be able to fit each and every child's learning style you can't say that my teaching style is the same in the class for all the 25 so now i would like to go on the chat box let's see right what is differentiation what is a differentiated instruction that is a question there what do you think these children are doing do you think because the child is short the child was not able to reach the upper column no so something beyond that so let me go to the chat box let me see what you have type all children have different type of iq that's why you need flexible lesson plan perfect cater to different learners need right individual interest okay whack style visual auditory kinesthetic visual learners are it's vac okay vac and that vac can be a combo of va ak vk could be swapped visual learners need a visual prompt how much ever you speak doesn't get into their cognitive skill that early as you expect it will get in but it will take time so visual learners need definitely oral instructions verbal instructions plus a visual prompt pictionary reading for them pictionary comprehension for them auditory whatever you show they need to listen to you your voice is very important for the children kinesthetic can't sit in one place they need to keep moving so for them to do sequencing or number activity you must take them to the outdoor or do a hopscotch indoor in the class so if you are planning to sit for 1 hour with that child you will do it in the 10th minute trust me and our classes are differentiated classroom we do the concept one day inside the class the whole bunch is taken outside the class as well. so our activity plan the skeleton which we are discussing it will show which day monday this is the plan tuesday this is the plan so it's not one a4 sheet for every day one plan will speak about a weeks plan planning got it i hope it is clear lovely so yes individual interest yes thank you cater to different learners need all children yes yes counting seriousness educational psychology stimulative teaching style critical thinking necessary accommodation and modification ms durga yes when you work with the children then only you come to know that necessary modification you have to do it can't be the same so let's talk about a shape if you say circle how sure are you the child is looking at circle in the mind it can be an an circle or a ball in the mind then the shape comes later the another child might think on a cheese block and then square later or cube later tissue paper square flat cheese cube it 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 becomes a cube again so flat 2d fat 3d 
that's how you teach in a simple way math is 2d is flat 3d is fact that's all so we make jokes with the children the 2d guys ate so much and become they became 3d they ate so much so we play with them right necessary accommodations yes thank you so much seeing and doing inactive iconic clock biscuits yes definitely different real environment resources will help them to relate lovely thank you for the participation today this is how we have to learn learn from each other right so at the end of the year the boy needs more support than the girl in this particular picture right i'm not talking about any specific category just imagine few children need extra support look at the elevation that the teacher has given is lifted up the child at the end of the year all of them have come to a level but he has taken extra steps and what is that block that block is your extra effort that you have taken from the activity plan the block goes to the activity plan that is why you were able to help the child right okay perfect let's go to the next one fine now you have to describe the activity so many things we spoke shall i recap once so that we'll get that sequence we we spoke on the child identifier if it's a single child we spoke on the whole class which developmental area we are focusing so we were focusing on the learning outcome we spoke on the resources we spoke on the theoretical perspective we spoke on the enabling environment which area i'm going to do indoor outdoor investigation where am i going to do this activity plan then we spoke on the description of the, now we are coming to the description of the activity the previous one was differentiated we we said that we need differentiated approach otherwise we can't do okay fine taken now we are coming to description of the play activity the question to you is can we play at grade 2 to 5 can we play from 6 to 12 if you say yes you should say how if you say no why not right so can you type on the chat box how will you make it happen if you convinced if you say that play is innate in children play way is the best method which we all agree at the end of the day if you say that ms ranjini play is something is very important than play it's very difficult it's going to be very difficult to make them understand that's the best approach then if you are convinced how will you make it happen chat box let's see yes ma'am yes yes you're right they say yes how will you make it happen can you tell me on that how are you going to make it happen real object explore exposure fine what else what else experiential learning okay good next okay real environment right then objectives and patterns hands on experience creative way for example in fifth also we are teaching tables after that we can play matching game right project based okay hands on activities role modeling yes learning from real life yes according to age groups it can be differentiated right how through competency based learning okay example drama okay role play right differentiated proper instruction simple instructions simple english let them first achieve then complicate okay at any age play way method helps the child learn and understand skit is role play every lesson attached with early life situation contributes collaboration experiential learning play should be education based yes art related role play integrated learning storytelling puppet show everything is fine right a lot is coming up i'm thankful for you all right thank you known to unknown excellent right finally using technology let's park it there we have more to discuss right thank you so much lovely lot of ideas lots of interesting um, understanding right okay you can play you can play from preschool until 12th grade even if you go to office you can play keep your heart light like a child only then you can observe the children are like a sponge how much ever you give they can take it when the children grow up and when you take say extra something more i'm tired 
can't do anything more than this today. Don't want to write. Why? They lose the quality of that sponge which was in them. They make themselves more hard. Or the environment, the social environment is making them hard. They can be child until their end of their life. Doesn't matter. Approach things in a very lighter fashion. Right? So here, the philosophy will work very well. No one will grab anything at the end of the life. Put up a nice smile always. Help your children also to smile. They will become good takers of great challenges tomorrow. Yeah? They need that sponge. They need to absorb a lot, which means they should be light inside. They should never panic. That is why children, when they go to the 10th grade and the 12th grade, when they write exams, their hands first sweat like anything. They try to, you know, rub it. They try to, they can't write. After they write, they do all of this. They Inside, they become a little bit scared of, will I be able to finish? Will I be able to do this? That's why we bring the sand clock right in the pre-KG when they do activity. Time-bound activities even from pre-KG. What to speak of 12th grade then? It's, it's done in pre-KG. Keep a sand clock. Okay? All right. So let's go to the next one. Holistic development. Okay. If I say today I will do only math and I will come out, let the English teacher go break her head. No, it shouldn't be like that. That's why two professionals get together and they collaboratively work. They discuss before they get into the class. Today the topic is this. But I'm going to teach them sounds, which means I'm going to tell them the sequencing. If I teach them the spatial, then I'm going to speak on the shape and measure. When you go and teach patterns in literacy, please touch upon this concept. So both professional discuss and then they get inside. That is when holistic development happen. Support, see, describe the areas of development supported by this activity. What's the answer? Areas of development, TSC, PD, CNL, literacy, numeracy, understanding the world, expressive arts and design, seven. Those are the areas of development. If you say any learning outcome I have achieved, come on, list the learning outcome. First of all, be sure before you execute. What is the assessment criteria? What are you looking at? That's what NEP policy is asking you. What are you looking at? After you execute this, what do you think you will get? Write it there. Then come back and see whether you have achieved it. If not, go to the resources, go to the description, go to the main planning and see whether everything is aligned. They are like stitching a cloth. Okay, now, what is holistic development? What are the different areas that we are looking at into our activity? Can we go to the next one? Okay, where will you fetch the learning outcome? Where will you go and fetch? You should know where to fetch, right? I would like to give you, I want you all of you to write down, otherwise I'm going to write on the chat box. I want all of you to <clears throat> look into this document, birth to five matters. If you type this on Google, right, and you should put early years. You should put birth to five matters early years. You will get a PDF. I want you to download it and keep it. This is like a Bible for you. When you want to look into what you want as the learning outcome, this will tell you for this age group, this is the learning outcome. This will tell you for this age group, this is the learning outcome. You should take the learning outcome, lift it from the birth to five development matters, Put it into your activity plan if you're going to work with zero to five. If you want to do more, then you will look into your outcomes of your curriculum. Pick it up from there and put it into your plans. Very simple anyways, right? Let's look into the next one. Yes. Holistic development are this, which I spoke. PSC, personal, social, emotional. Cognitive, something to do with the thinking, brain. Fine motor, pincer grip, simple pincer grip, or coloring starts with the jumbo crayon. Later on, the children get the tripod grip. There are eight steps to pre writing skills. Right? We will take a class again on how to enhance pre writing skills. Right? We'll have another session. 
okay sensory language emotional and everything spiritual that is also important you should always have roots for your school if you say kala niketan your school kala niketan should have roots worksheet for you all for the children if you want to understand what my school has akshara abhyasam which is the first writing that happens in the pre kg in many many schools in india it's its roots so accordingly a worksheet is made and given to the child and the parent to do together on that particular day the child is made to write in the first rise then only the uh, the the vedic studies happen for them the people believe in that if you have any other belief then you must have something like that your basic roots to your curriculum worksheets for it, for that will definitely help look into the bloom's taxonomy very important please take a picture and put it in your class when the children start learning with you the children are just remembering teachers okay they are only in the first level of remember whatever you say the number of times they just remember from remembering to understanding and remembering it's it's like a it's it you need to climb it's a ladder you need to work from remember to understand you need to work that which is filling the gap you must put into your activity plan that's why i'm showing the picture to you after understanding they go and apply things then as they apply they try to analyze you know what is an analyze analyze means looking into the pros and cons for example if i say i'm throwing a question to you can you analyze the green flag methodology into your activity planning today on the literacy development if i say then you must first take jean piaget methodology's first philosophy he says give the child and the adult initiated approach balanced give flash cards help them on the sensory motor stage he says all of this so what you would do first you will execute it and you must also analyze if i don't execute as per piaget what happens the children will go low in their psc skill low in their cognitive skill will not be able to think will not be able to process will not be able to express so they move from remember only then they understand after that they apply and see later on they have to analyze if i take a magnet and put this a plastic into it it is not sticking whereas if i take that iron small jump clip it is sticking so what is happening what is there in this what is not there in this let me analyze they need to analyze things they go to that level then they evaluate they see which one works for them which will not work for them evaluation self evaluation later on they become creators after that you cannot stop them all that that you have to do is go as per bloom's taxonomy and go step by step bridge that gap put it into your activity plan so there are three steps now look at the last pick there are three steps let's get here the first one is observation that's what we saw i was saying right let's first observe the children then only you will know what to put into your activity plan first observe then do the assessment where do they stand what should i give them how am i going to give them what kind of resources i'm going to give them why should i give these resources who told me that i have to do it like this oh piaget said bolby said steiner said okay because he said it has worked let me also work the same way then description of the activity then okay i can do the way prg wants but my children are different lovely let's have a differentiated classroom okay after that what kind of holistic development i'll bring i'm only teaching literacy today no 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 get into art and bring arts there for a horse is the phonic sound let's make a horse tail revise the previous sound t tail also do literacy also count the number of sounds t a u which is an alternative spelling now there are only three sounds learn math also feel the tail which is a sensory stuff and understand the fine motor of it look into that habitat of that particular animal and understand the world around you where does he live which climate will he survive think about it 
So holistic development, a lot of areas are covered. Finally, get into plan. So first do your observation, then do your assessment. Your assessment is your own observation assessment that you're doing. Then you do the planning. So when you come to planning, then go with whatever I said from the beginning until now. Let's go to the next one. The final stage is reflection, right? I've come to the end of the show today. Reflection. How you will reflect? You should know what you have learned. If you feel that you have not executed, what is that bit that you couldn't execute? Put that as your starter for the next activity plan because that did not happen for you. All right? So your reflection should be based on the theoretical perspective, not random. Sorry, ma'am. Today I came and my coordinator shouted at me. I couldn't even plan and execute. I My plan went for a six-step today. No, no, no. That's not the point. Do the reflection based on the theoretical perspective. Okay? And then understand what was the accommodation. So somebody was talking about the accommodation. Yes, you need to do reflection. Reflection, accommodation based on the reflection. And you should be smart in doing it. For example, last to last month, my teachers were not able to do the shorts or in a, in a very in-depth way, the way the materials I gave them. They came on a call and said, Ms. Ranjani, I was not able to do this particular activity plan that you gave. How will I be able to accommodate next month? Next month, the activity was all about travel. This month, it was about transport. We must go to the network and let them choose their favorite transport. Now, do these two, three deck in that particular plan. You must be very smart in merging things, integrating and doing it. And you should be very strong with your professional practices your collaborative work and understanding each other pain, being very empathetic, understanding each and every role of others. That is your principal, your uh, caretaker, your uh, LSA, your co-professional, everyone in the setting so that they will accommodate your reflective part as well. They will help you. That's reflection. We are at the final uh, slide. We are doing so much for a child. You know why? That is because the child is unique. Every child is a unique child who is constantly learning. So you cannot say that six months. No, I gave time for six months. No, even at the age of now, whatever we all are aged up with, we are learning from each other. That's why we are in the sessions here. Positive relationship. What is important? Put up a smile. Have the smile throughout the day. Give the smile to your child. Help the child to have that sponge always in the heart to grab and grasp whatever you or the other person would give. Let them not have any restrictions, boundaries when they are learning. Enabling environment. It's not important if you're very empathetic, sweet and all that. If you don't enable the environment, then there's no use. If you can do all of this, then... Your learning and development is assured. And that enabling environment straight away strikes onto your activity plan. We spoke about it, right? The whole of that particular slide on all the enabling environment. Where you want to do it? Indoor? Outdoor? Which area of development you're focusing on? Do you want to do it with your uh, uh, early years uh, investigation le learning corner? Or you want to get into the corridor and go to the jolly phonics corner? Learning phonic corner. You want to get into the math craft corner? You want to go to the mark making corner? Which corner you want to choose? Why are you choosing? What is your expectation? Right. Let's do a fair recap. Okay. The recap goes here is thought well on the need of the lesson plan. First of all, we thought well. Why do we need a lesson plan? Why not just do random things? No. Sarita already said. A well thought always saves unnecessary time on, you know, like you don't waste time. You're ready. Any time they call, you will you can go for inspection. Whoever wants can get into my classroom. Please bother about who's walking in and out. It really happened. Trust me. We had this KHDH pre-inspection coming in UAE. And there was a mentor and the principals who had come in. 
the class was so interesting the children were doing formation on the sensory tray few were there few went on with beads few went on different resources were there you know the ice cube dipped in paint was tightly knotted on a uh, you call it that the net the net cloth it is a net cloth the net that you use to catch the fish right it's that cloth so from that small hole the paint will come out but it will make patterns some children were doing that they were dragging that that ice cube and they were writing a b and whatever some went straight on the ifp the big television in the class and they were touching the paint you have a paint app they were doing there so the principals came in not even one child wished the principal because they were engaged they did not even look up for an adult who has come all that they know is miss ranchini who is just walking in and there between all the groups and they can hear my voice and thanks they did not even look up to say hello to them because they were quite engaged you know what's the age 3 and a half to 4 and a half that's it they were so engaged so it's important that we plan things so that we can grab the children attention based it on your observation the second point is first of all you do the observation you understand the children ability understand the previous knowledge then loop it with your curriculum may it be pig methodology high scope curriculum cbsc curriculum doesn't matter any curriculum just loop it with your curriculum but you must base it on the pedagogical approach what is a pedagogical approach collaboration integration differentiation only three simple right okay embrace the theorist you must embrace the theorist the theorist is important to to for any plan to execute to get executed be clear on the resource planning what do you want prepare well in advance don't worry who's walking in and out have the role of others and yourself very clear don't crib and say that you know i expected that you will support me no this is your work this is my work we will work together let's analyze where, whether we can take turns and you will take my work i'll take your work next period that's okay this is such clarity you have role of others then there is no point in you know cribbing or you finding fault you don't have time for all of that have differentiated strategies not all the children are same we saw the uh, um what do you call the uh, bloom's taxonomy if you want them to become creators this is the final step first of all you should start pushing them from remember to understanding yeah two two so four two three so six two four so eight why if you ask them they can't say if they leave the flow they can't remember the number yani if, if two five sir so, wait wait two two so four two three so, so again you start from the beginning why i've seen many others telling them can you stay from the beginning only then you will get two five so ten why i have resources if i do grouping i will get 10 why should i start from the beginning and waste time let's push ourselves away from that um rote learning this is how the horse has a cap right no let's look beyond that it's important have differentiated strategies inclusive practices all the children are equal reflect and recommend now finally reflect and recommend what you want to do whatever you do go back to your planning with the help of observation and assessment when you reflect and recommend what you are doing is you are observing on your own self how you executed your pedagogical approaches then you make the assessment oh ranjini i would like to do this 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 okay fine put that as a starter for the next one if you do that you become the expert teacher you do the lesson planning as it is expected all right we are done 8 19 now right we will leave the floor for questions if you feel it's a tag line of mine if you feel i've done justice for you i want you to come on linkedin to connect with me because there the place for growing so many professional experts will post their work you can see beautiful activities happening there enabling environment will come up beautiful tips for teaching will be there so please always be connected with all of you today if you all come from a same area then i would give you a homework let me see how many of you will come up 
with a good activity plan so the next 5 minutes i'll i'll take okay sarita is it okay sarita we take 5 minutes for them yes, to do activity yes. plan yes yes sure ranjan not okay problem. so take one concept take anything whichever grade you are doesn't matter any any subject do an activity plan okay so i will put on the chat what comes first the activity plan should be all right let's go here okay um the first thing should be your observation ops i'm writing in short form okay obs is observation assessment now you have to um what do you call role play yourself as if you are in the class next comes assessment the third one comes your plan what you want to do in the plan you have the learning outcome which is lo i'm putting it in short form then comes your um, resources okay when you do your resources check on your research don't mind my spelling okay don't want to waste time on the right click and do things so you can do it for yourself research research should be based on theorist quickly put just hyphen 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 topic this 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 just put the plan here let me see theorist after that what happens you apply okay then the next one after you apply you have to reflect when you reflect differentiated classroom okay let's work on the 5e no worries but please put it like this ops hyphen assessment what is your observation on your class right now you are holding a class what's your observation i want like that differentiated classrooms okay and recap okay do it in this let's see so i'll stop the screen share and uh, let's wait okay i hope you have taken um, the rest of the information that i gave on the last slide you're going to do a simple planning right if you say 5e i would ask you how you will do it based on one topic so you can say even letter s you can say number 10 you can say uh, planets you can say anything that is how that is how you have to do it like your observation ma'am my class observation is 70% of them do not know about wild animals okay so wild animals is the topic hyphen learning outcome is children should know the real environment okay write down next lo is real environment hyphen yeah can you do the activity plan please thank you meenakshi ma'am and ms rama deshmukh i would like both of you thank you thank you sindhu so please go on the uh, the message that i put in otherwise your messages will overlap my stuff so go there pick it up and please put it yes okay so ranjan in the meanwhile if anyone has uh, any questions, questions can we take it so that uh, so yes. participants uh, if anyone has any questions we would like to take this time to address those in the meanwhile when the others are preparing their rough plans if anyone has doubts please utilize this time for that so that we don't waste time later on. yes do we have any questions because when i checked the chat box we i couldn't find any i believe it was all very very clear yeah. and yes the feedback and the certificate link has been posted please take note of that as well so any questions dear participants ranjini is ready can you please share one sample activity plan abdul salam sir they want me to come to their setting can i travel topic fruits color shape taste texture of fruits okay previous knowledge planning all right learning outcome real life experience good expo reinforcement middle plenary cooperative learning self evaluation days goal final plenary okay thank you thank you thank you ms bubaneshwari thank you ms brathati day thank you okay all right yes sarika i don't think we have any questions as of now yeah. perfect uh participants do we have any or can we go ahead with the winding up of the session sir maybe go ahead yeah i can give a review of uh, what danchini has delivered recap 
yeah if anyone would like to give a review if anyone would like to share their learning experiences we would like to hear from all of you any particular thing that caught your fancy which you feel is a definite yes in your classes which something which could you could identify with something which you could relate with uh -huh. yes No. What oh, is important? Can... Yeah, okay, ma'am. You can go ahead with uh, you know <clears throat> giving a recap and you can write up because uh, all the you know uh, <clears throat> methods or whatever plans presented was self-explanatory, so there is no so, doubt. All right. That's the, that's the reason, Ranjini. So congratulations. I believe they were so clear with it, so they didn't have any doubts. Thank you. So thank you so much, dear. But yes, Neha, ma'am, we can unmute you. Sneha, ma'am, we are. You can unmute yourself and ask your questions, ma'am. Sneha Jadhav. Hi, Miss Sneha. Can you unmute? Sneha, can you unmute yourself? If not, please put your question on the chat box. In the I chat box. That. Yes. Yes. I believe Sneha Nam is not able to raise Maybe. her hand. Yeah. I mean, uh, unmute herself. Sneha, you... Pardon, sir? You can go ahead, winding up. Yes. Uh, so, thank you so much, Ranjini, for that fantastic session. <laughs> the way you put it all together because the content is too much and as you said it is applicable for all classes it's not only for the junior classes for the early years it's actually applicable for all of us all class teachers who teach across classes thank you so much for that well researched well presented uh, session today thank you and uh, we are blessed to have you with us it's so nice thank and you. i'm sure the participants will agree with me when i say that uh, a lot of it can be taken as it is, you know, there is, uh, it was so well explained that we can take the point as it is and we can implement it in our regular classes. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. As we come to the end of the day session, I would like to propose, it's a privilege to propose the vote of thanks. Ranjini, thank you once again for conducting such a wonderful session. As always, we have gained a lot more knowledge and insight with respect to creating and crafting lesson plans and activities and see to it that our children get a rock solid foundation. As always, you know, it's very evident that these ideas come from your heart and you have found your true calling in early years education. And that's a blessing, let me tell you. My humble thanks and gratitude to Dr. Abdul Salam for his magnanimous support and guidance. Thank you, sir. A big round of applause to Mr. Arun Mohan. Arun, I know how tirelessly you work behind the scenes for the flawless execution of each and every one of our BTAC sessions. And it's a great feeling to have you as an integral part of this team. Thank you. Last but not the least, a big thanks to all the participants who were pa present for today's session. Our young children are so blessed to have you as their teachers who are ready to learn and empower yourselves. Before we conclude, let me remind you once again that the feedback and certificate link has been posted. Uh, sir, could you please wind up the session? Thank you. Well, so uh, thank you. Yeah. Can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Ms. Sarida, for the moderation. Thanks. And, uh, well, Ranjini, ma'am, as usual, rock the stage with a lot of input. Yeah, thank you so much. We keep looking forward to having your session. <clears throat> Next one is also you have announced now, I think. Thank you Pre so much. Yeah. See, uh, there was non-stop learning. Everybody was, you know, listening to with uh, pen and paper, I could see. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> speciality of this session is we have educators not only uh, dealing with the early years education, but from other subjects also have learned. I joined uh, this particular session. 
So the credit goes to Ranjini, ma'am. They came to listen to you. Especially you can see Maya Jayesh, ma'am. She is a Malayalam teacher. And even Arun Mohan is also, you know, learning. He is a commerce uh, teacher for grade uh, 11, 12. So thank you so much. So there are many educators who are, you know, eagerly uh, <clears throat> looking forward to listen to your session. So thank you so much, everybody. Uh, so keep uh, connected. We will go together, travel together, so that our students will be benefiting. Once again, uh, Sarida Varya, ma'am, Arun Mohan, and all educators for your wonderful cooperation. I thank each and everyone. And on all your behalf, I appreciate and I thank Danchini, ma'am, for spending this much, you know, time with us. If he has, to, if she has to give a very, you know, great session like this, she has to prepare a lot. We can understand. So, kudos to you, ma'am, for your, uh, you know, great effort, Herculean effort, because to fetch in things from here and there and consolidate and present is not a, an easy task. So, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, keep connected. Uh, good night. We are winding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Salam, sir. Once again, thank you, Sarita. Thank you, Arun Mohan. Thank you to all the participants. Lots of points have come in. Please make the activity plan happen. Please keep all the ingredients and then uh, please make an activity plan, whichever subject you do. And my number is there. You can share it with me. We can discuss as well. We can take it forward if you have any doubts on that. Right? Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Arjun. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Go back. Go back.